Welcome back, guys, to the Great Ace Attorney Adventures, where last episode we took on the testimony involving the true culprit, pressing through it to obtain a medical report card as Kazuma taught us how to examine evidence, finding from the report that Mr. Wilson couldn't have eaten that steak on doctor's orders, having been anaesthetized just prior to the dinner date, as we continued to poke at the witnesses to reveal that there was another person, a woman present at the time. Using the examination, we then revealed the conspiracy behind their silence, with Satoru Hasunaga actually being a police inspector under orders to remove the presence of the English woman from the scene. But with her identity revealed, the prosecution are now forced to bring her in for questioning, causing a recess. Excellent work, Ryunosuke! That was superb! <sighs> my heart was in my mouth the entire time. It was almost unbelievable. I mean, looking at you in there, you were drenched in sweat, your eyes popping, your knees knocking, and you were grinding your teeth. It was a grim sight, but before I knew it, you started finding inconsistencies in the testimonies. I think you might have a natural talent for being a lawyer. Forget it, it's terrifying. If I get through this, I don't ever want to see the inside of a courtroom again. <laughs> Anyway, it looks like we've exposed your phantom lady at last. Miss Giselle Brett. A student from Great Britain. Is she? That's what I was trying to tell everyone from the start. Dr. Wilson wasn't alone. There was a young woman with him. Like I've been saying all along. Yes, you have, haven't you? I might not be overly confident in the courtroom, but my powers of observation are one thing I'm sure of. Yes, I can see that. So, about this young gentlewoman. Thanks to our detective friend, she was hastily escorted away from the scene, it seems. Did you see what happened with that? No, I didn't see any of it. I was just on my way out of the restaurant myself. Then, on the floor next to Dr. Wilson's table, I noticed there was a gun lying on the floor. And just after, I bent down and picked it up. I didn't have time to think about where the sound of the gunshot had come from. The waiter ran over to me, looking as white as a sheet. And he bundled me into some sort of small pantry next to the kitchen. I was thinking about a detective. He apprehended a suspect without a moment's delay. Yes, and because I was shut in the pantry, I have no idea what happened outside in the dining area. Ah, huh. uh, there you are. Well done, both of you. Professor Mikotoba! Well, it seems I was right. The pair of you make an outstanding team. You've exceeded my expectations, I have to say. Yes, it seems you planned this from the start. You arranged things so that I wouldn't be able to act as a lawyer in this trial. Our modern country is still in its infancy. Our justice system even more so. Which is why... I firmly believe that we need to send our brightest young stars overseas to learn all they can. I wanted to avoid a situation that may have resulted in your study tour to Great Britain being cancelled. Well, it makes no difference. Lawyer or otherwise, if I'm the kind of man who can't help his best friend avert the worst crisis of his life, I shouldn't waste everyone's time by going to study overseas anyway. What? What are you saying, Kazma? <laughs> so that's your stance. I was afraid you'd feel that way. Kazuma. Well then. It looks like it all comes down to you, young man. To to me? Yes. You need to prove your innocence and uncover what really took place in that restaurant. I must say, I very much want to know the truth. After all, I have a personal connection to this case. Come to think of it, he said the same thing earlier this morning, didn't he? Um... If you don't mind me asking, Professor, did you know the victim? Yes, I did. As you're probably aware, Dr. John H. Wilson was a visiting professor at UMA, and it was I who invited him. Oh, uh, I see. I didn't know that before. Anyway, you're about to go into battle. The victim was a university professor from Great Britain, and a well-known one at that. Naturally, our government is looking to identify and punish the culprit as quickly as possible. But let's not forget who we're going up against. 
the gentlewoman whose involvement our police bureau went to extraordinary lengths to hide. Yes, and I'm sure the prosecution won't be using every tool at their disposal to quash your case. But I've no doubt that you pair will put up a good fight, right to the last. Best of luck. Thank you. Now then. I need you to run an errand at the university at once. There's something I think we may need. Of course. Good luck, Kazuma Sama. Defendant Nalhodo! Court recess is over. Please make your way back inside the courtroom at once. It's time. Let's get back to it, partner. Let's go in there and deal a decisive blow. Before those old fossils know what's hit them. Um, Kazuma. What? Thank you. Really. What for? Well, if you hadn't said you believed me, then... I'm fairly sure I'd already have been found guilty by now. Look, I have faith in you. As a lawyer and as a friend. Coming from you, that means a lot. If I'm found guilty in this trial, he's really going to give up on his dream of studying abroad. That's the kind of true friend he is. So this isn't just my battle anymore. Whoever we're up against, we absolutely cannot afford to lose. Alright then. I'll save the thank yous for after the trial. You could treat me to one of those sukiyaki meals I like from Yume Cafeteria on University Street. With an extra large portion, of course. Thank you, food is always nice. 22nd of November, 12.09. We return. The gentlewoman about to hit the witness stand. She got found pretty fast. The court hereby resumes the trial of Rainosuke Nalahodo. Prosecutor Auchi, have you managed to subpoena the witness? Yes, Your Excellency. Against all odds. And thanks to a certain young stripling, the prosecution is now under rather painful scrutiny from the government. Ah, uh, sorry. Let the government scrutinize. That's their job. It's nothing to worry about. It's highly unlikely that the good relations we forged with Great Britain will emerge from this trial unscathed. Will you still think it's nothing to worry about when the new treaty breaks down our nation flounders? Again, terribly sorry. If the friendship between our nations is really so fragile, then the treaty isn't worth the paper is written on. You really have nothing to worry about, Ryunosuke. What do you mean? A secret trial, anxiety over some foreign government's opinions, a bungled investigation, missing witnesses. Is this what our nation's justice system is? Is this the Supreme Court of Japan or of England? Shut up! Shut up, you jumped up rookie boy! You and your friend know nothing! Nothing of the situation our nation finds itself in! By aligning ourselves with this great world power, we'll become strong. Diplomacy has never been more critical. Steady political maneuvering is what will secure our futures. I won't deny that I'm no expert. I'm just a student, and one who could arguably study harder too. But standing here now in our Supreme Court, there is one thing that I feel very strongly. A country that fails to uphold the truth in its justice system is a country with no future at all. Well said. We're not okay. Despite the wide-eyed look of terror. You little brats! Thank you, Council. This court is the pinnacle of our nation's justice system and exists solely for the pursuance of truth. With that in mind, this trial will now resume with the next witness taking the stand. The visiting student from Great Britain, Miss Giselle Brett. Yes. Your Excellency! How British just swan on her head. Well, 
what a delight it is to welcome such a fine gentleman to Japan and from such a distant land. Tea. Someone bring English tea. In England, no discussions take place about tea. Is that true? No idea. So, um, ahem. Could we possibly trouble you to state your name and occupation for the court? Of course. My name is Satoru Hosonaga. I have been working undercover as the head waiter at Le Carnaval, but my true- Yes, yes, we know all about you already. Inspector Hosonaga, where are your manners? In England, it's always ladies first. Is that true? No idea. More importantly, a little earlier today, you said something to me? You said your powers of observation are the one thing you're sure of. Oh yes, I think I did, didn't I? Yet your description for this amazing sight was simply a woman. Sorry, Rina, it's okay. But powers of observation aside, your powers of description are sorely lacking. Guilty. So, dear lady, once again, if we may trouble you for your name and occupation, please? Oh. Well, yeah, I'm surprised this technically hadn't happened yet, kind of ish. Though this is the first point it could happen. A language barrier? Um, I'm terribly sorry, dear lady, but what? The lady says her name is Giselle Brett. She comes from London, England. She's a visiting research student, currently enrolled in Yume University's medical faculty. Oh my! What a rare treat to hear the dulcet tones of the delightful language of the British people! <laughs> I gift you all with that. I'm afraid I don't understand a word you said, but it was as beautiful as a hummingbird song! As far as I can tell... The detective is translating her words faithfully enough. Yes, I agree. <laughs> You'll obviously do fine in England, Kazuma. Her English doesn't rally you at all, does it? Nor you. You've clearly been paying attention in your English classes, Renosuke. How many different ways can I say your name? I need classes for that. The court thanks the beautiful lady for taking the stand. Now, we may trouble you to confirm something, Miss Brett. Sudden you Maya, when I think about it. Three days ago, at a restaurant called Le Carnaval, a grim murder took place. The court has been led to believe that you were dying there with a the victim, Dr. Wilson, at the time. Is that correct? She says, yes. This could take some time. So even though she's studying here in Japan, she can't speak any Japanese? Sounds kind of typical. <laughs> That's truly English of her. <laughs> She'd like to apologize for disappearing from the scene. She says that she was due to make a presentation at the university, so she had to leave immediately. Interesting. When you're the one who engineered her escape, I was just following special orders from the Bureau. Well now, dear lady, would you be so kind as to cast your eyes over this photographic print? Seeing as you were so unfortunately present at the scene of the crime, could it be that your resplendent eyes caught sight of the wicked perpetrator, perhaps? Apparently, it was a very frightening and sorrowful sight. Do you mean to say... Yes. It would appear the lady did witness the crime. The very moment when the accused, standing right there in this courtroom, shot the victim in cold blood. Order! Order in court! Did... Did you hear that, Your Excellency? Here we have an absolutely conclusive witness statement! Hmm. 
Well, it looks like it's clear now. Clear who our real enemy is. Unfortunately, I will have to ask you to formally testify, if you please. Kindly tell the court the exact nature of this frightening and sorrowful sight you described. Be funny if I just don't actually get the translation. A frightening and sorrowful sight indeed. I had arranged to meet for a slightly late luncheon with Dr. Wilson that day. The professor was unable to eat, so I ordered for myself only a beef steak. After a while, the accused came over to greet the professor and they got into a fierce argument. Then, not long afterwards, the accused took the professor's gun and shot him right before my eyes. I don't carry a gun myself, so obviously I couldn't have been the culprit. Yeah, okay. Hmm. This is condemning yes! testimony indeed. Why are you saying yes to that? No, I... I didn't have any kind of argument with the professor at all. Objection! Quiet, you filthy wretch. Look at you, you black-hearted blackguard. And look at this snow-white angel. I'm sure even a dark-minded scoundrel like you can imagine whose words the court is going to believe. Ah, You're still making the same mistakes, Ryunosuke. You mustn't blurt out when you're goaded like that. That's a lesson you need to learn. Ah, But he's so annoying. Of course, I was at the scene as well. I took statements from this lady and the two witnesses who testified before and reported back to the bureau. It was decided that Miss Brett was not involved, so I let her go. The testimonies of the last two witnesses were completely worthless, however. Well, even so. On the day in question, the lady was wearing the same outfit as she is today. As you can see, there is nowhere about her person where she could conceal a firearm. I mean, I would think she could hide a gun almost anywhere in that outfit if she wanted to. Unless and until the precise location where the witnesses to have hidden the weapon can be shown, this is moot. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. Those are the witnesses' own words on the matter. Ah, that's ridiculous. If only I was allowed to lift up a dress, I could prove it. What are you saying? Don't think about doing anything rash, <laughs> Ryunosuke. <laughs> but I didn't fire the gun I picked up. There must have been another gun there that day. You're right about that. Which means this lady was hiding a gun somewhere. Yes, that's what we have to prove now. And to do so, we will need to pull her testimony apart. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. Oh, uh, yes, Your Excellency. Frightening and sorrowful sight. I had arranged to meet for a slightly late luncheon with Dr. Wilson that day. Oh, I can just press that. I'm just going through it. Going with the motions. What? Wow, I thought I saw something weird with his eyes then, but he was just blinking. I thought his eyes swelled for a second. What the hell? Right, let's press that for a statement. Yes! After 2 p.m., in fact, that's really quite a late lunch, isn't it? Objection! You don't keep up with the latest fashions from Britain, do you? Late luncheons are on vogue, isn't that right? No. Ah. Hmm. A decisive English no has quite a sting to it. The gentlewoman is currently working in the victim's research laboratory, it seems. So it was apparently a daily occurrence that they would lunch together. But on the day in question, the victim had another appointment at the clinic first. Yes which we can prove from the medical report card that was submitted as evidence earlier. That's right. Miss Brett and the victim went to lunch following the victim's treatment, which is why it was so late. Yes, yes. That all makes perfect sense. Such wonderful logic. What a shining example of English intelligence this fine gentlewoman is. So you both arrived at the restaurant. What happened next? 
also was unable to eat, so I ordered for myself only a beef steak. Yes! He was unable to eat, you say? And that was because he just had a tooth removed at Holly Clinic, correct? That's right. Um, you're supposed to actually check with the witness before answering. Was Miss Brett aware of that fact? It seems so, yes. She'd heard that the professor was to have some dental treatment. So that would mean... That it was you who ate the steak pictured here. Is that right, Miss Brett? That's right, yes. The print you have there shows the table exactly as it was left after the horrifying events. Exactly as it was left. Dear me, what a harrowing experience. To have traveled to a distant island on the far side of the world and be embroiled in such a tragic incident. Have no fear, my dear lady. I swear I will crush the evil fiend that has subjugated you, subjected you to this terrible plight. Subjugated you. So the victim, Dr. Wilson, had nothing to eat or drink at all. That's right, other than some carbonated water. Just water? Yes, the professor was unable to eat, but he had been given permission to drink water. So it appears that the diners toasted their lunch with a glass of water each. Huh, they each raised a glass of carbonated water. What do you think, Ranusuke, about the witness's last statement? Ranusuke thinks it's meaningful, because there was only one glass on the table. Also, I'm just wondering as well if this encompasses the fact that the everything was left as it was with the murder because we know the steak was eaten after the death picture so we'll say it's very meaningful that last statement of yours miss brett has a profound bearing on this case well well how fascinating do tell us what is this profound bearing hmm <laughs> the significance of the statement will become apparent when the time is right. The defense calls for the witness's last statement to be formally added to the testimony. Hm. Well sidestepped, counsel. Very well, Miss Brett. Kindly repeat what you've just said to be added to your official testimony. Gladly, she said. That was brilliant, Kazuma. I'm gonna remember that one. Which one? The significance will become apparent when the time is right. I could really use that phrase. I'd hope there are some more useful tips you're picking up from this experience than that. Were you not okay? Yeah, bluffing. Bluffing's good. Bluffing works. I ordered a beefsteak for myself and the professor and I said cheers over a glass of carbonated water. So then we'd have to do something based on this. Uh, is the fact that it's carbonated the actual issue? Or saying cheers implies more than one glass and that's what we're proving at. I mean, I can press that statement. Yes! But this is probably my statement. So both you and the professor drank this carbonated water, did you? Yes. Being the waiter, I poured the two glasses myself. I clearly remember doing so. Except you're actually a detective. And the beefsteak. That was for you, Miss Brett. The lady says that she'd heard it was not customary to eat beef here until Japan opened its doors to the world. Yes, that's true. What a frightful place, is the lady's opinion. And I've heard it's not customary to eat sashimi in Great Britain. Now that's frightful. Every country has its own cuisine. As long as people have food to eat, what does it matter what it is? True. Kind of think of it. The first time I tried carbonated water, it was much more of a shock than the first time I tried beef. But anyway, back to this witness statement. Somehow I feel like there's something out of place in what she's saying. We need to pounce on even the slightest thing now because you never know what might lead us to our goal. Our goal of turning this trial around. Understood, Kazuma. It's more like out of place on the table, technically. 
Okay, so I'm gonna skip back, see if it's still the same. Cheers over a glass. We'll choose present, and then I'm assuming I either want to use the photograph of the victim or the crime scene photograph. I guess it's clearer. Yeah, actually, we need the whole table for what we're postulating. The fact that there's only one glass, that no cheers has been said at all. And of course, it's still placed on the side that he died. <laughs> Which is weird enough. And been eaten there. So, things are very weird. Let's present this. He didn't say cheers. There was only one glass. Yes! That's it! Let me just confirm something, please. It's to do with this photographic print. Just a short while ago, you spoke of this print showing the victim's table at the crime scene. That it was exactly as it was left. That is correct, the lady says. Well, that is... it's um... it's odd. Very odd. Dear me, what's odd is the defense's inability to express itself. Ah, You're not okay. What is it about the print that looks odd to you? Well, obviously it's... It's the cheers. The cheers? Miss Brett just told us that she and the professor said cheers over a glass of water. But if that's true... There should be two glasses on the table, not one. Ah. You're quite right, Council. There's only one glass pictured here. Attention! Are we supposed to be impressed by this nitpicking over minutiae? What possible difference does the presence or absence of a glass make on the case? Objection! Minutiae, you say? Could it be that the detective here removed a glass from the table to conceal the lady's presence? Minutia, indeed. Of course not! I would never do something so reckless! There should have been two glasses on the table! Or are you gonna try to tell me? You can clink with only one! You're quite right. I suddenly took two glasses to the table. Inspector, what did the lady say? It would seem that it was Miss Brett who took the glass from the table. What? It was also terrifying everything that happened. I panicked and thought I should try to hide the fact that I'd been there at all, she's saying. Good gracious! Sorry. There. As I assured the court before, this is of no consequence at all. Oh, please. We must remember that this student has just murdered this lady's luncheon companion before her very eyes. Who could blame her for conceding a glass or two in a state of disarray? That's absurd. Oh, really? So do we take it that you are now going to accuse this vulnerable young and beautiful woman of mischief? What? No, 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 no. The, this, this, this can't be put down to mischief. I'd like to know. Exactly how the lady took the glass from the scene. It would seem that she slipped it into a small handbag she was carrying. A handbag, you say? Yes, Your Excellency. A small handheld pouch commonly carried by well-to-do women in England. So the beautiful lady has very graciously explained how and why she removed the glass from the scene now. And, you know, just said that she's got something that she can carry things with with her. However, the fact remains that this glass has absolutely no bearing on the case. Hmm. This student has been trying to confuse the court with logical reasoning, but in the end it comes to nothing. No more pretentious accusations. You have wasted enough time already. Indeed. The lady has offered a satisfactory explanation as to why she removed this glass. I think henceforth we can consider the matter to have no bearing on the case. 
Council for the defense, are you in agreement? Um, well, I don't know, really. If you want to pursue this matter further, you're going to need to show that it has some deeper significance. Yes, you're right. So she took the glass away in her handbag. If there's a deeper significance there, it's... I mean, it's just the handbag. Because she had something that she could carry something away. So she had something where she could store something. At least of the size of a glass. Wait, the lady put the glass in the handbag, you say? Yes, do try to keep up. It's already been explained to the court that all English gentlewomen carry handbags with small items. Let me see. A little while ago, Miss Brett stated the following. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. But what she forgot to mention was her handbag. In which it would be perfectly possible to conceal a gun. And with that statement, we leave another episode with a bit of a conclusion come to. So how will Miss Giselle Brett respond? Can she really not speak any Japanese? We will find out in the future, for all our suspicions will start to unravel to maybe a couple more truths. Join me next time for the Great Ace Attorney Adventures! I'll see you guys then for more. Bye bye